In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the XT14E. It's very simple and anyone can do it. Before unhitching your caravan from your tow vehicle, always fully apply the parking brake. If the ground's not level, put some wheel chocks either side of the wheels so it can't roll forward or backwards. When you put the jockey wheel down, make sure the handle clips all the way in so the jockey wheel can't fall over. It's that simple, safety first, and never put any part of your body underneath the chassis of the trailer. Once we've found a nice level spot to set up our caravan, got the caravan pretty much level on the jockey wheel, we can put down our stabiliser legs. Pull the blue handle out, lower the stabiliser leg down, and lock it into place. Make sure that the blue handle clips back in. It's okay to set these up on an angle. Now, put our brace on and wind the leg down. Keep in mind, in a stabiliser leg, there's fairly small bevel gears and they've got a little roll pin which actually acts as a shear pin. If you overload these while winding, it will break those and it will make it very difficult to use. So you'll be down to Bunnings to find a replacement pin. Now we do the other three and we're ready to set up the rest of our caravan. The step setup is very, very simple. Put your hand in the back, grab the little bar behind the step, push it down and pull the step forward at the same time, lock it into place, ready to go. Before you open the roof on the XT14E, you must remember to undo all four latches on each corner of the roof. First, remove the little gold linchpin, take it out, and undo the latch, pull it back down out of the way. So when we get into camp, we need power for most things in the caravan. So first, switch on the main power. Before I put up the roof, I need to flick the switch for the roof. While I'm here, if I'm gonna run other options like the diesel heater and the hot water system, I can flick on the diesel heater, the hot water system, and the water pumps. Now, I can get on with setting up the camp caravan and using all the different features. I've double checked all my latches are undone. I've switched on the power and I'm ready to open the roof. So now it's just a matter of pressing the button. This is so easy, while the roof opens, I can get on with setting up other parts of the caravan. Setting up the electric awning is very simple. Simply switch on the mains 12 volt at the isolation switch and flick the switch on the inside of the door. As the awning extends, if possible, support the fascia, just make sure that no wind gusts or anything can get control of it. And packed inside the fascia here are the support legs for the awning. As it comes out, you can pop them out, pop the hinge end out first, then pop the leg out. Using the cam lock, adjust it roughly to the height you want. And it's not a bad idea just to keep a couple of finger holds on the awning if there's a little bit of a breeze. Just make sure it stays under control. Straighten our legs up. Now if we choose, we can put some pegs into the awning feet and that will keep it in place. Setting up the kitchen is not complicated at all. Just find the kitchen support leg, place that roughly where it's gonna need to go and First, we need to release the securing pad bolt at the front. Lift it, twist it 90 degrees, then lift it up further and twist it back, and it'll sit up on top of these two pins here. Now, press down the blue tab on the slide, and we can pull the kitchen out into place. When it's fully extended, 
grab the support leg and just under this front corner is a receiver for the end of the leg. Pop it in there, give the kitchen a slight lift to support the weight and tighten that up. Now, we can undo the little bungee cords on the side of the fold out table. Release them on both sides. Now, our table extension will come out. So with the windshield, we slide it forward a little bit in that direction. Then we can fold it up and push it down into the two slots to hold it in place. Now, we connect the gas. Before you connect the gas, check the condition of this O-ring. Make sure there's no cuts, no abrasions, and it's there in one piece in good condition. Pop it into the gas bottle and turn to the left or counterclockwise. Get it in tight and turn your gas bottle on. First, grab the gas hose through the access hole underneath the kitchen. Remove the little black cover on the female fitting. And what we do is we line up the grooves on the side of the male bayonet to fit into this fitting here. Push it in, turn it to the right, and that's locked in. Before starting your Trumo gas hot water system, what we need to do is remove the flue covers on the outside. First, the main dust cover. Simply drop that out of the way. Then, we remove the factory cover. Now, our flue's clear, so we're ready to start up the hot water system. Now that we've got our gas flue covers taken off, the gas is on, and I've switched on power to both the hot water system and the water pump at the panel, I'm ready to switch on the Truma gas heater. To select your water temperature, up is 60 degrees, down is 70 degrees in the center here is off so to turn it on simply flick the switch on now if it's the first time you're using it or it's been a while since you've used the hot water system it may take some time for the gas to purge all the way to the hot water unit itself so if the little red light on the Truma panel comes on switch it off give it a minute and then start again Continue that process until the system lights. Once it's lit, wait about two minutes and go back and check it. Then again at eight minutes. That way if there's any air trapped in the gas line and the unit goes out, you'll detect it quickly and you can restart the process. Operating the diesel heater is very simple. It'll operate in two modes. It can be used as a fan only or as a heater. And of course you can adjust the temperature. To switch it on as a fan only, simply press the fan icon. The blue indicator light will come on, meaning it's running, and the fan will start up. At any time, you can then switch it on to heating mode. Simply by pressing the heating icon, that'll start the combustion process, and it will start heating the room. To switch it off is easy. Press the center button with a circle on it, and that'll switch it off. When you've done with it, switch it off at the main panel. There you go, folks. That is the setup of the XT14E. It does not get quicker or easier than this MDC model.